obviously, it's quite a problem. How do you make D2O? Because normally the deuterium in the water is diluted by a factor of 7,000, which for chemists is really pretty dilute. The best way of making D2O is by a process called electrolysis, where you pass a current through the water to make hydrogen. The process was first carried out on a large scale in Norway just before the Second World War. In Norway, which is a very mountainous country, they have a lot of cheap electricity from hydropower, rivers going over waterfalls. So they have electricity and it makes economic sense to generate hydrogen to make, for making ammonia and fertilizers by electrolyzing water. And if you electrolyze water, you find that the H2O reacts a little bit faster than the D2O. So if you go on electrolyzing more and more of the water and keeping what's left and then doing several stages of electrolysis, you can gradually concentrate more and more of the D2O till eventually it's nearly pure. This process was carried out in a fairly remote power station in central Norway, in a region called Telemark. Now, one of the main uses of D2O in the early stages of nuclear science was for making nuclear reactors, nuclear piles. And during the Second World War, the British and the Americans were terrified that Germany who occupied Norway in those, at that time might get hold of the D2O and start nuclear research. And in one of the best raids of the whole Second World War, six Norwegians attacked the power station, destroyed the heavy water apparatus and retreated. And the reason it was so successful is that nobody was injured and nobody was killed. So they got into the place, blew it up, and escaped without anybody being injured. And in fact, the German general that investigated thought it was one of the most magnificent military feats he'd ever seen. There's another story that before the Germans invaded Norway, that the supply of heavy water, two cans, a few gallons, was smuggled out to the UK. And it was so valuable, it is said, that it was put under King George VI bed overnight so it should be safe before it was then transported to America. Is that true? Well, this is the, the legend. And the story is that when it was flown to America in an unheated plane, the water froze. So when the people took it off, it sounded as if the cans were empty and they got really worried, but then it warmed up and melted. D2O has a number of applications, but its real use is in a technique called nuclear magnetic resonance. We've shown it on our video about T, how you can use it to analyze molecules. And nuclear magnetic resonance is very sensitive to hydrogen atoms. So if you want to study some sort of molecules dissolved in water, if you use ordinary water, the hydrogen atoms in the water have such a strong signal that you can't study the dissolved molecules at all. So instead you use D2O, which do not respond to the same frequencies as the hydrogen, and so you get a nice spectrum. I think people watching will have two questions. What does heavy water taste like, and what will happen to me if I drink it? Well, I've never tasted D2O. I suspect that it will taste really quite similar to H2O, though it's difficult to predict because sometimes things taste quite different. But water doesn't really taste anyway. You usually taste what's dissolved in the water, salts or whatever. There is a strong body of opinion that D2O is quite poisonous. And the reason why it's poisonous is because in your body, you have all sorts of molecules that have hydrogen bonded, particularly to oxygen. And 
the, these bonds break as part of the various chemical processes in your body. Deuterium oxygen bonds are slightly stronger than hydrogen oxygen bonds, and therefore, if you start changing your body for the, the chemicals in your body from hydrogen to deuterium, these bonds will break more slowly. And so various processes in your body are likely to slow right down. If they slow down, they may completely stop. Well, I was always told that you could kill someone by making a cup of tea with D2O, because um, what it does um, is there's a difference between the way that hydrogen reacts and deuterium reacts in the body. So it can replace hydrogen in the body, and obviously it's everywhere. It's in all the water and it's in all the enzymes that, you, that, that are in your body. Um, but I have since read that apparently you need to replace about 50% of the water in your body um, to actually kill you with D2O, which is kind of impractical. So uh, would be murderers, don't try that one, so it won't work. There is a rumour which I've never been able to verify that the argon lab in the United States, just outside Chicago, at one time had a deuterated dog which had been brought up and fed on D2O. But I think this is probably just a, an urban myth and it never happened. There's also a suggestion that if you dilute your whiskey with D2O rather than H2O, that you might not get so dizzy when you drink too much, but you might be dead. So it's not something that one should try. And anyway, it's far too expensive.